once again, everybody, thank you for tuning in for another show. Please share, subscribe, uh, like, you know, the whole nine yards and hit the notification button so you get all the videos that come out weekly. This is another episode of What? The Iconist oh Podcast. God. Yes. Iconist. Iconist. Oh, people. Iconist is in the building, people. Iconist, we're here, people. We're here. Ah. Just letting you know. We're here. We're here. <laughs> Keep going, man. I'm just here. I'm just, you just okay. You just for the ride. All right, you here for the ride? Yeah, cool enough. Ride. Um, I go with my. <laughs> this is your Connors podcast. Um, my name is Barry Three D, and I'm here with DJ Rod C C C. Wow, you even put in his own echo effect. Nice. Listen, man. Echo costs money, you know. I can do it myself. Save a coin, man. That's yeah, what I call it, man. That's <laughs> Bob, brother on budget. Budget on brother. <laughs> <laughs> Bob. <laughs> That's right, man. That's what the acronym is for me. Brother on budget. <laughs> Before we go any further into this episode, I want, and I keep forgetting, and I know we put it up at the end of all our videos, but I want to give a big, big, huge shout out to Jay Bird Digital, who does our templates, mm. makes us look good. So, you know, without Jay doing what he does for us, um, then then this this would look really uh, uh, um, a little bit different. It wouldn't be as flashy, and uh, that doesn't go with our personality. So, but I, I, I like I, I like the flashiness. So, once again, big shout out to Jay uh, Jay Bird Digital Studio. Um, Jay, right, right hey. on, right on, Jay. Thank you. So, you want to know more? Go to the end of the video. You'll see him. Uh, mm -hmm. He does a whole bunch of graphic design. Really cool guy. Um, you know, reach out to him if you need any kind of work done for anything from logos to templates that like we have, all that other stuff. Uh, once again, big, huge shout out to Jay. He did all the work for this, uh, with our logo. So, so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, touch. Okay, cool. I'm done. Yeah, Jay. What's up, man? Thank you, Jay. We appreciate all the effort you contributed. We thank you. Yes. Go on, man. Let's start. Go on, man. So, so, you so, you know, all the energy, all the energy is here. Let's go, man. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah. And you know, and if you can help the, pan, the, the channel grow, please go to over our, co uh, our coffee uh, link, you know, donate what you can. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, that'd be greatly appreciated. You can find all our stuff, you know, my stuff, you can find it on Barry 3D and all this other stuff here at Barry3D.com. You know, all our links, all our social medias, you know, there's a Facebook page for this, Instagram page for this, and we're going to post stuff on all the time um, mm -hmm. and just kind of kicking it off. You know, you can find Rod. Rod is over on all social media, and he's on yeah. Twitch, too. What's your handle Twitch. on Twitch, Rod? Well, my handle is uh, it's very simply DJ Rod C. Very simple. Just, I know, you know, budget cuts. So we just go straight, man. You know, less letters. Don't cost me much when I have to put it in big lights. <laughs> thinking ahead. Poor thinking. His future is bright and on point with the budget. There you go. <laughs> Only need six letters, people. I just need enough to afford for six letters. That's all I gotta say. Oh my god! Yeah, you can definitely check me on Twitch TV, <laughs> Twitch TV forward slash DJ dot uh, DJ Rod C. I'm there uh, weekly. You know, got my my nice little show, Club Shots, and I you know periodically do some um, pop ups and everything like that. So I play a whole you know range of things, open open concept, open format. Yeah, I think just about everything. So come by, say hi, let me know you saw me on here. Be nice. Be right nice. on. Shoot us a comment. So, on the Iconist podcast today, as you can tell by our background, if you're listening, then you don't know what we're talking about yet, unless you read the title, of course, because you're intelligent and I'm a little bit slow. And uh, if you know what we're talking about today, we are talking about uh, a great cartoon. This cartoon came out way back. Um, this show was fun. It was a lot of action. It was a mm. mishmash of a, 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 to me, it seemed like a lot of influence. We are talking about the one and only Thundar. Thundar. The Barbarian. The Barbarian. Ta -da! Okay, so that's as well as far as I get with Oh my god, listen, I'm I'm gonna tell you right now. Let me just jump ahead. Go. Barry said it, you know, we're gonna be doing Thunder Barbarian. Thunder Barbarian. I'm like, wait a minute. No. When I started doing the research on that bad boy, I'm like, oh my god, memory flooded back memories. I'm like, yo, those are the early days when you were just like you know, you're just growing up and you're not into that kind of the heavy type of like music. It's like, ah, you're just going to break your fucking tables. I'm like, Thunder! Thunder! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to, I'm sorry not to go over crazy, but listen. No, I'm, no, happy you brought this one, I'm, I'm happy you brought this one to the table, guy, because I'm like saying, yo, it's memories. I'm going to tell you right now. We, 
I got I got to go back and see if I can find this again. No word of a lie, guy. I'm gonna have to find I'm gonna have to find the seasons or something, guy. Holler Very me, simple. Man. Hmm? Holler at you. I bought the DVDs okay. a long time ago. Okay, we'll, we'll talk. We'll I talk the, offline. I got the box set. Man. I got the I got the box set. This we'll, I got this we'll years ago. So we will talk let, offline, let son. This, go on. You know you what? Let's, let's see. Look, let's hear it. Is. Thunder the Barbarian, right? Um, mm. So you got the three main characters. So this is this is like Saturday morning goodness. You sit down with your bowl of cereal. Right, and and on you're cute. never too on old cute. for a bowl of cereal unless you lactose intolerant and then take a pill. Um, you know, get take, your kids take a out. Hit for the team. Take, take it for the team. Take it for the team. You know, you ain't going anywhere on Saturday. Right now, we're still in in, in lockdown, unfortunately, mm. and, and and you know, and and we're always waiting for new shows to come out. Why wait for the new shows? Let's go back and watch some of the older ones that exist, and and just. Have those childhood memories. Get those endorphins going. It makes you happy. It doesn't have to make sense. It just makes you happy. You don't got to justify it. It just makes you happy. <laughs> it made me happy. All day long, all I had was a theme song playing in my head. Listen, you're, oh my God, you're right. You're like, you don't even have to. It makes you happy. It doesn't it have to make you, but it does make you happy. These are good memories. And for those who remember this, this show, you know, oh, you know what? I can't even, I'm sorry. You always take point. I'm just going to sit. Go. You go, guy. You okay, go. Okay. You take point. I'm just all right, too, all excited. Right. <laughs> too excited. I'm going to hold you back for long. So Thunder the Barbarian just had three characters. It had mm-hmm. uh, Thundar, literally the Barbarian, who was, you know, dead center there, with his fabulous sun sword, you know, with Ukula the Mock and the, the sorceress Ariel, you know. And they this takes place in a post-apocalyptic world. So it's mm-hmm. in the future. What happens is a runaway comet runs, you know, passes between this huge comet runs and passes between the Earth and the Moon and causes the Moon to split in two. It, it then because of the the Moon splits, the Earth just goes through a whole change, right? Tidal waves, tsunamis, um, gravitational pulls, all that gravitational kind. pulls. The atmosphere changes, and then you know we lose all our technology. But then again, it's replaced by science and sorcery. <laughs> Sorry. Right? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm going to be playing this. I got to. Sorry. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, you, guy. I'm like, I'm you don't understand. I'm like, it's flipping the whole day. I was like, I need to just copy this, download this. I'm going to have to make some kind of remix off of it. Sorry. That's just me in my head. Sorry. Keep going, guys. Yeah, that's, that's, a Twitch. That's, a, that's a mix. We got to do that mix again. So, with Thunder, this came out in 1980, came out for two seasons, a total of 21 mm-hmm. episodes. Uh, you know, like we'll say half an hour episodes, but we know with commercials and all that, it's 22 minutes per episode once yeah. you get down to the meat of it. Um, and it was came out, it was done by. Um, you know, the, the producers were uh, Joe Ruby and Ken Spears. So if you always look at the end of the cartoon, you'll see Ruby Spears. That was her company, like Filmation and the rest of them. Uh, you know, and, and, and it said that you can't, you can't get better than that. It's out in the future. As I said, it's, it's, you know, it's a science sorcery kind of thing. So in the future, at this point, it's like science and sorcery. Uh, and and the, the, the magic users, the sorcerers, are now the ones in control. They've, they've taken over um, because they have all the power. And they're in different places. So you recognize like landmarks. So you'll, you'll recognize uh, the Statue of Liberty. You'll recognize Las Vegas. You, you'll you recognize, you Washington. know, the technology which is current to us. Aircraft carriers, dune buggies. Yeah. But for him, he, he wasn't born with this stuff. He was born and it was just broken. It was like a Mad Max kind of thing. In the year, like, I think like 3,994 is when it takes place, if I'm correct. Yep. So yep. it's far in the future. Um, the magic users are still around, and they are the ones that have still kind of use science, so they understand some of the machines we have, some of the, you know, from uh, missiles to helicopters and cars. Um, and they took over and, and got the regular people, and they keep them in fear, you know, and live as, you know, a dictatorship. Mm-hmm. And Thundar was literally in the gladiatorial pits, um, you know, fighting for their amusement, until one day he rose up and broke his bonds, you know, <laughs> exactly. And he was fighting, um, he was under the thumb of this one magic user called uh, uh, Sabian. So Sabian yeah. is his main antagonist. But who I remember the most is another magic user called Gemini, because I'm, I'm a Gemini. And <laughs> I, he, he see him in the opening credits, him and, and Thunder fight all the time. So mm. uh, it, it's just been action 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 you know he had the, the famous the theme song as you could tell sticks with me and rod then you had his sayings uh, you know yeah. thunder thunder didn't speak much and and it wasn't that he was you know dumb he was more not aware of what he was looking at at times like he never understood what a car was he thought it was a flying some kind of flying mechanical contraption horse they go around with horses right he's a barbarian but in the future um so 
as I said, they never really explained more than that in the intro about his, his origin. You never saw mm-hmm. it. You don't know how he grew up or, or any de- more details in that. You, you know, you know that Ariel was the one that helped break him out. She's, she got trained in magic by her grandfather. She gave him the sun sword. You know, clearly that was influenced. I mean, 1977, 1980, come on. Star Wars was huge. Yeah. Right? Um, Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger, that came out. That was, so well, it, it was a lot of pulling on the fantasy world. And, and uh, you know, the Mad Max was out at that round time. And right. so I could see where the influences came from. It was kid friendly because back then oh, yeah. we didn't need, yeah, we didn't need much of a story, but it just went. And then he had sense. his famous sayings, and I'm like, okay, three of you, this is what it said. You fighting this person, you fighting that person, you got this, you got your cool sayings, all right, I'm done. It's like his, his sayings were like a hook on a good record, you know hook. what I mean? Listen, I got back into this, and I'm saying, Lord of Light. And I'm like, what? I forgot. It makes me want to go for the rest of the day just saying, that'll be my, my current, you know, Great Caesar's ghost to be Lords of Light. Lords what of Light. This? Yeah. Ah. We were saying just before we started this one, you know, the other the other saying is what? Um, you, you were saying that one. That's you. Oh, this one is demon dogs. That's right, demon dogs. Demon dogs. That's right, demon dogs. Demon dogs. <laughs> no, but my mine is always Lord of Light. But the scenario I'm going to say, like, for, go ahead. What Harry's saying is um, you, I was going to say it, but you, I was going to bring it up earlier, but you brought it back in with Conan and Conan the Barbarian. So I see it definitely. They're pulling the influence from Conan the Barbarian. Um with the sun sword, as you can see right back there, he has this glowing type of weaponry. Basically, again, this came out in 1980s. So this is basically, you know, of course, if it's being brought out in 1980s, they had to create it prior. So prior, again, was in the realm of Star Wars. So you can see who your, who your Luke Skywalker is, per yep. se, that is Thundar. You can see who Chewbacca is. That's the other partner we're gonna say to, and then you Ukla, yeah. who the Ukla, no, but I was yeah, we're gonna we didn't get into that, his name again. Yeah. That's why. And the third person we didn't mention her name was Princess Ariel. Yes, be like Princess Leah. But you can see that the influence is coming from that. And as Barry was saying, this is a post post apocalyptic world. Um, it is literally in my head. If you want to make like a, a, a modern type of comparison, it's like a Walking Dead. If Walking Dead was in the future, more futuristic, you know, George Jetson kind of scenario, Walking Dead would be the closest thing that we can we can narrate right now. Going around trying to salvage to stay alive. Uh, You see people, you see characters, you know, second character and third characters who are basically living in caves and you know who are just rummaging and having a small little village and you know living in broken down buildings basically just to survive. Go right. from that type of mindset and this is like barry says this is where conan grew up and he grew up in this type of mindset not understanding what actual um uh, art, uh, artifacts are in front of him thinking like a uh, car is uh is a wagon because three quarters of the time it was actually being pulled and used by actual yes. horses along that line so no gas no gas no gas and I have a flash right now, but I just can't remember. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if we're gonna try to come back to it. Hopefully, I'll, if I remember it before the end of the show, huh. that the similarities of um, there was a show that you know I'm gonna come back to it. Yeah, let me come back to it. Something in the fan sense that was futuristic. You know what? That what it was. Uh, we'll just slightly go sideways, going to the new. Um, well, not the current new uh, Thundercats, but the re re one they did in 2011 where it was all yes. futuristic and anything that had was mechanical, you know, they didn't know they needed fuel for it, but when they got fuel and had magical to make it actually operate, it was yes. an all new wonder. This is the same type of mindset that Son of the Barbarian was in. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's that type of realm. But the great thing about Thunder, you'll realize he wasn't, like Barry said, he wasn't, he was, he was just aware of his, that was his up type of upbringing. So the knowledge he he had is all that he knew. Then you had Princess Ariel. Uh, she was basically just learnt under her father, you know, through history, you know, of life and history and stuff like that, through like libraries and stuff like that. Yeah. Which is great that when you really think of the number, how futuristic George Justin this is, that libraries and certain things like that were still somehow functional or still accessible. I will give them that. It was always great that you can see that by, by her the way she spoke, how articulate she was. Yeah. Her pose, you know, 
her pose and how like she was she was really reflective of a of a prince of someone of of royalty or at least a person who have the understanding of like there's different levels but we are all humans trying to survive in this world against the evils of the evil sorcerers the wizards in the different regions and that's basically how the whole world was set up so I'll let you go back with there, bro. But that that was that, that's basically that's a that's a good starting point. Yeah, um, absolutely. Okay, so you're right. So you, you called it like so a lot of technology was used at the time, but not the way we would use it now conventionally, right? Like a car, you'd get in a car, you would drive a car. You mentioned you there, they would have a car, but it would be hooked up with horses pulling the car. You know, right. there's one of the um, episode I liked where they brought in uh, an aircraft carrier. Oh my gosh! Right, but it wasn't it wasn't a fully out aircraft carrier because what they had was huge logs underneath the aircraft carrier so they kept the tarmac and that whole top part but it was on top of logs like a giant raft and yeah. and you know it was going up and down and that that was how they got around the aircraft carrier so thunder all of them still rode horses uh mm-hmm. the monk uh rode a different type of horse right yeah. his horse wasn't a typical normal horse it's like a more sturdier beast and he never really uh I, not that i remember gave it a name no, they didn't give it a game. But one thing I'll definitely like to interject and just say that yeah. in the futuristic time, um, there were humans, there were mutants, and you can nearly say, I think it was the easiest way, the mutants were maybe parallel to saying like there were aliens in that sense, that there were different type of beings, humanoid right. be- beings. So yes. we'll just say that. So this is where they never explained where Mukla came from. No. Um, and you, when you brought about the horse, because his horse did look very different compared to a different horse. So it had four legs, had a, the body and the structure of a horse. Right. But the face, his his legs were as much thicker, more yes. thick like an elephant, like yeah. that kind of thick boldness. Um, tick, but tick, 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 boy. <laughs> but but you can see that they also interacted with different type of um, beings, different type of humanoids, like a, a falcon type of hawk. Uh, humanoid. Yep. Um, there were some, you know, some frogs or something. You know, that type yeah, of reptilian they had, they type had, of uh, lizard men. They had were rats. They had exactly. uh, they had werewolves. They had rat people. Yes. Yes. Um, they had so, all these different things. The best way I can describe, and this is this is what got me into. It. So I like Thunder the Barbarian. I mean, clearly, you know, I've still got the theme song playing in my head as I'm talking right now. Um, <laughs> and, and and I like the action of the show. It was simplistic in the sense that you didn't need the big origin to get into the episode. Everything was wrapped mm. up per episode. Uh, sure. the, the, but I'm a huge gamer. So I, I like my t- like, you know, tabletop mm. games, like my classic, you know, get the dice. And so this seemed to me like a Dungeon and Dragon, but more so, more so the game I got into was Gamma World. So it was a TSR game back in the days called Gamma World. Yeah. Once again, took place in the future, played very similar like Dungeons and Dragons. And you had your humans, you had your mutants, you had your mutated animals, and it was open, in, you know, and, and just like the name uh, says, it's Gamma World. So it's in the future, apocalyptic world. Um, and, and you can have be a pure strain human. You can be a mutant, as I said before. So to me, uh, Thunder the Barbarian would, would fall in the class of a pure strain human. He's human. He's not mutated at all, right? Mm. Ariel, uh, she could be a human and, and of course a sorcery or maybe it's another power in her and Ukla was definitely a, 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 a mutant or something you know he's yes. Ukla the monk like that's short to me like monkey so it's see and he carried on he has that persona as a monkey or a gorilla more humanoid with the fangs mm-hmm. and so forth very intelligent you know yeah. and I know they all have their, their their thing so first of all you know, Barbarian, the Thunder has his sun sword. So he, clearly he's first in using weapons. And you see them going hand to hand. He's very strong, but yeah. And it's on his wrist all the time. He pulls off the, the hilt, clicks the button, and away it goes. I always wanted one when I was younger. I honestly, I honestly. Oh, oh my God. Honestly, like, I like, how did this guy have this thing? You don't understand it as a young child. Like, like I, was, I actually, because of this, I was trying to, I was trying to calculate how old I would have been. That's that and that. So I would have been in around like say nine. Uh-huh. Eight nine is when eight nine is when that would have came out. And yeah. I was like, yep. yo, this thing's sticking through his arm. I don't know how to like, take it off. He doesn't cut himself. Yeah. I want a sun sword. <laughs> and I go play, which man, you see you went at my house at that moment, man. Every time that came on, I used to grab like one of those um old tubes from from uh you know like, yeah. From, 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 
Yeah, yeah, man. From the rest of your, you know, Christmas wrapping paper or whatever. Because and, and so the tube, I'd get one of those tubes, man, and I'd just run around there and just yell, out, "Demon dogs!" and start beating around things around that. My dad must have looked at me and said, "Look at this little ten-year-old here on crack." I mean, you know, he I probably thought it. Probably just didn't verse it. I, I wouldn't blame him, but that was that was my imagination. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, yeah, that's wow. Okay, I'm good. I'm back. I'm back. So, uh, so you had so Ukla to me. That's the way he was. So Sundar. So the three of them. What I liked is all of them had their strengths. So mm -hmm. Ukla, even though you didn't see it often, you know, because he seemed to be the muscle of the group, he used a bow and arrow. He had a, a bow and arrow that he would use as his weapon. Right. right? You see in a couple mm -hmm. episodes. Ariel. She, okay, she's a magic user. She and she's pretty. So she's got her knowledge. She's the one teaching Thundar what they're walking into. Like Thunder is like, what's this contraption? It's an elevator, Thunder. Oh, <laughs> you know, what's this? There was one time he, he rescued her. Now, let me go back track a bit. Ariel was never the damsel in distress, which oh, I liked. No, no mm -hmm. she wasn't like every episode. She got captured and Thunder had to figure out a plan to save her. She's the one that had to talk common sense into him because he wanted to run into everything with Sun Sword out, fist swinging, you know. Um, and he, you could see he was able to do it the hard way because he just didn't know better. And yeah. she's like, you know, Thunder, we can take the elevator. What is that? <laughs> yeah, Thunder, we can drive. So what are you doing? And then Thunder is so egotistical at times, right? And this is what used to get me. It's like, she showed up, there's an episode where she's in a car and he's like, I'll drive. And it's like, but man, you don't know how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> easy hold this push this pedal i go and i'm thinking well it's true you're in the middle of a desert so you're in las vegas not much can really happen you're driving a dune buggy that looked like the cartoon speed buggy from back in the days <laughs> yeah yeah you know had the horses behind right so it, it, this that was to me was the cool fact that she was never the damsel in distress she mm -hmm. so she had the magic she had the intelligence she knew how to read um, yeah. and with thunder was never in a situation where he had to really learn to read he, he could read some things but he would see something like literally you would see elevator what it no he'd be like i love it she's like elevator and then she would explain what it was mm -hmm. there's um one where they get into the city and i think they were in new york yeah because the statue of liberty's there so they're in new york and there's skyscrapers and he's like well i don't understand these 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 tall temples are built and it's like they're buildings like what people do with them they lived in them and he and his his words were how did they get up there did they have wings <laughs> right and and you know because at the time they're looking at the twin towers and other buildings and it's mm -hmm. like well how it's like man uh you know our ancestors must have had wings to fly back and forth to get you know into their their boats and you know i don't understand why it had me so high up and ariel just kind of chuckles it's like no thunder they had the elevator to get up and down and that's how they function and and he was like oh okay it doesn't seem functional or defensible <laughs> right and when you looked at the top of it like and the opening of the show which was always cool because things got so tossed around where the moon split in two. What? You'll remember this. There was like a cruise liner that was thrown on top of a building sideways <laughs> and stuck there. <laughs> and people were living in it. I'm like, okay, this is... The, so the thing is, it's on an angle, like a 90 degree angle, but mm -hmm. they're living in it that way because they need it shelter. So they need shelter. You know. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. So yeah, no, no go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So that that's 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 Thunder the Barbarian, man. That's that's some good thing. So this is what I always wanted, though. Now now that I've gotten older, and I still watch mm -hmm. it, and I still have a, a a giggle fest with it, and I enjoy sure. it, um, and and I like the action. I say you're always looking to bring some stuff back, and some stuff they mm. bring back, they they don't. You know, it's like okay, it's cool. I mean, and some stuff really worked out. Like they brought back Carmen San Diego. Right? Yeah. And yeah, that ran for yeah. three seasons on Netflix and I liked it. I watched them all. Mm -hmm. I liked it. And it gave yep. a full ending. So it had a beginning, middle, and an end, like a true right. ending for the character. I was happy with that. It wasn't like the cancel that we don't know what happened. Um, that being said, we know He-Man is coming back. And there's two He-Man yep. cartoons coming back. One's yep. being done by Kevin Smith. Um, mm -hmm. It's got a Netflix deal. So I'm curious. And it's going to continue from the original series. Um, I mean, we know we've had re remakes of He-Man before, you know. And I liked one of them. Like one of them was really cool, and they canceled it because the toys didn't sell well. Well, whatever. Thundar didn't have really any toys. There was a couple of toy figures, not really sold over here in North America. You had to go more UK to get those figures. Go figure. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to my point, I want to see Thundar come back. That'd be nice. Yeah, I, and I don't want to lose anything to a live action movie or a TV series because they won't do it justice. And I know mm. because of budget, I'm being very realistic. No, completely. So, so I wanted to come back as a cartoon. 
and I want it to go, you know, and I'm always saying Netflix, but let's be real. Invincible just ran on, on, on whew, oh, we're going to talk about that. Invincible just ran, you know, on, on Amazon Prime. So look, mm-hmm. let's, let's get it on Amazon Prime. Let's get it on, okay, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, whatever streaming service. Let's, let's really go there. And I think they should aim this for, and there's not enough of Thunder the Barbarian. Like people remember it fondly, but you can't find much on it. Definitely. And I'll say this. Let me just add to that, that mm. it's coming back right now. This is definitely one of those nostalgic type of um, shows that when, not if, when they reboot it, it's definitely going to be geared for the adult crowd. Anybody 20 and above. Because we're going to have to give it some type of texture. And it's not, yes. not going to be as kitty as it was before. Because even no. kitty as it was before, you know, there are certain episodes and certain situations that happen like, oh, you know, he's having a fight with this particular person. And he's, like you said, it has to be, I will agree that it has to be um, it's an animated. If we can get it animated, you will get more you'll get more content, more, more feelings, more value out of, out of the characters by doing it that way. You know, just draw yeah. it up and everything like that. You'd be able to do that. Um, but if we give it that, give it that, that texture, you're going to have, you're going to definitely have the older generation, which is like us who remember it. Yeah. And you real, and I'm dead sure, I'm dead sure that the older generation will be the ones to be like saying, Oh snap, I completely forgot about Thundar. And when they start watching it, they're going to reminisce about their childhood. Now, when you make it as good as it, as it can be, you're now going to be able to bring in a new crowd because now you have the people who are accustomed to this type of uh, apocalyptic, uh, apocalyptic type of environment. Yes. Um, you know, Feral, Feral Walking Dead, Walking Dead, Mad Max, you know, all that kind of scenario. So it's not going to be tarnished, not tarnished, but it's not going to shock them to believe to to believe futuristically that this is possible. Again, yeah. even around that time, even if you want to just take a 30 second pause around that time, actually that would be after uh, Planet of the Apes. Because even Planet of the Apes was still the similar type of futuristic. Yes. Not as far as nope. Thunder the Barbarian, right. but it was still, at least you have that base. We've already done, we've already seen uh, two remakes on Planet of the, Planet of the Apes. Right. One with um, Mark Wahlberg. Uh, Mark, Mark Wahlberg, and then you had the one with uh, James Franz- Francisco. Fran- Franco? Say, right? Yeah, Franco, by Paul. James Franco, Franco. Yeah. yeah. James Franco, who started that, that second, the second um, remake, or the third yes. remake on that. But it's, it's definitely there that people would definitely be able to understand it and believe it more that you can actually get, you can get some kind of base on that. You can definitely get a base on that. There's, there's so much story left to tell. There's so much. Okay. There is. Look, here it is. Here, I'm almost. Uh, there, there's so much. I'm giving the camera the eye. There's so much story to tell. And what I mean by that, the eye is like. What I mean by there's so much story to tell. There's still okay. We, you got three characters. Everyone loves them. Now hear me out. So anyone watching this, and I'm gonna mm-hmm. tag certain people on this, and we're gonna talk about this even more on our Facebook page. Uh, you know, there's never been a true origin story like you hear his oh. origin in the beginning yeah. of the intro right he, he says his famous lines of you know every episode you had to hear lords of light demon dogs you know ukla we ride you know and then of course the famous one when he runs into battle Aye! yo yeah listen that's 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 again that's a xena princess warrior type of you know battle cry that you know like stuff is about to go down you're gonna get hurt <laughs> Are you prepared for the whoop that I'm about to bring to your? <laughs> you going to get crumped up? <laughs> get messed up. So no, go on, guys, go on. Yeah, Sorry. and I mean, look, it had sorcery, it had magic. So when I, when yeah. I said like all the sorcerers in there, all the villains he fought were sorcerers, and most of them were evil. And of course, Ariel, for some reason, she helped him. So we need an origin on on Thundar himself. Like, how did he get captured? How did he? You know, he has an, a strong will. He, he didn't kind of become this servant kind of personality, right? A lot of people in the future saw, oh, geez, he's a magic person. We, we got to bow down to him. And Thundar was always like in chains, fighting it from the get-go. And when he got his chance to be free, he said, I'll never be chained again. 
So there's a whole origin of being, okay, who's the nurse parents? How do you get captured? How do you survive so long? Was he a long time in these gladiatorial battles? Um, with his sense of righteousness, you know, you're a gladiator. Obviously, he didn't kill nobody mm -hmm. that didn't, you know, because he, if you're fighting another human, he's going to say, well, I'm not going to kill him. I'll, I'll fight him to win. So he, he made his name at some point. So there's a lot of relevance to it. Um, even his look, okay, base, and he's very basic look, you know, he's got on, you know, uh, it, it's like leathers or whatever, you know, boots, a uh, top and, and, yeah. and a loincloth, but he's got a necklace with a, a, a tooth on it. So was this a fight, a creature he had to fight to survive? Is there a reason why he has that? Did someone give that to him as a gift? Right, passed down from his parents or family or anything like that. It's just, it's just a, a heritage. It's just an emblem from his, his ancestors. Yeah. For all we know, we have no clue. No clue. No clue, no, no, nothing about found about it, right? Um, and that's to show you, like, I mean, the show was so good that they didn't need it, but now if they had to come back, they have to do it. I, I want to see it. I, I need to understand, and for me, so he was in there, and so was Ukla. So him and Ukla were both in there, and I could see where they formed that friendship. But once again, mm -hmm. don't know about Ukla's past. Don't know, um, you know, How did he even wise. get into that position right? to be captured? Right, right. recapture it. How the two of them became friends in captivity, because th that's where they hint at, that they were friends in captivity. So, you know, we don't know how long they were there together. Could have been a year, could have been years. How did Ariel, but that, that, that to me is the interesting part, because yeah. one, she, she wasn't a captive, right? She was raised. She was, you know, uh, taught educationally. So mm -hmm. she could read, write, she knew her history. And you know, that is that's a very that's a very serious part that needs to be broken down because if we're going to like I said as I said earlier in regards to having access to that type of literature having access to that type of knowledge this is futuristic because if I'll even break this down that when the Earth went through its turmoil yes they didn't give a date. No. But from the images and everything like that, because this is 1980s movie, like 80s show, they're going to call it in that particular realm. So we could even say, even now, 2020 or 2025 type of scenario, by the time they get this all figured out and get it up, oh, 2025. No, so, side note, side note. So they did give a date. It, it was, you know, the Earth and the Moon in 1994. 1994? Okay, okay. See, so, so right now, we, 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 we on board time. We on we on borrowed time. We on borrowed time, <laughs> because at this at this point we should be just rough rolling. You know we should be our time right now. This is Walking Dead, minus minus the, the dead zombies. This is Walking Dead. Trying to go from, sun from town to town. Huh? I, I need a sun sword. Oh boy, if you get a sun sword, we're in trouble, boy. Yeah, <laughs> but sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. Just saying. Like this is this is the time that you know. I would the point I was going to say is 1994. So you can see from 1994 mm -hmm. to 3994. Yes. Look how long that the many generations. That's like that's like I'm scared to even try to calculate how many generations it was from then, from that time till now, or until 3994 that you know people you know evolved. What what are we seeing? What 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 has transpired? That's that's a major part of the story that yeah. needs to be dug up into. You don't have to go all the way. You could jump, and whatever the case to be. Yeah. But you need the information needs to be brought up to give us perspective. Okay, now we're this futuristic George Jetson type of way. <laughs> you know, how how do you have access to these type of literature? How is stuff still available? You know, mm -hmm. how does Ariel have the ability to to be taught? You know, is she she's part of a particular uh, sect? That is, that information has to be dropped, has to be been passed. passed because yeah, when exactly. you watch the show, when you watch the show, mm -hmm. you will understand that she speaks with the clarity of knowledge as though she has physically touched the car. She has physically touched a helicopter. She knows what an, an elevator is. And it's not like saying, yeah, you know, it's an elevator. Yeah, it goes up and down. But she said it with such conviction. That's like, yes. I know what this is. Yes. That's yes. basically to me. I've always, going back over it, it just, you older you start to see things with different mindset. You start to realize, wait a minute, how are you so convicted that you know what these things are? But she, and she said, story like, right I there. read about it. I've seen it I, before. I've heard stories about it. So she, she's right. been it, it ingrained in her from day one. Right. So Ariel's character in the series, to me, was the transition character. 
or mm -hmm. the, the one who connect so connect the viewer exactly. to the future right yeah. because as the viewer you see like oh okay that's a car but then right. she's got to say hey this is a car i know what how they used to get it they used to put it drive around in it thunder it's a car and he'd be like oh okay so she was a connection as the, the, to be the audience say oh well she understands the car we know it's a car oh she got explained to him the key thing that you're saying and you hit it a lot of times right and uh, i'll get right to the meat of it she's a princess because mm -hmm. she's referred to as princess ariel all the time, princess Correct. Ariel. Correct. So if you're a princess, where's your kingdom? What happened to your kingdom? Why'd you leave your kingdom? Right. Right, where's the rest of your lineage? Because as a princess, you think that if her um, parents were, you know, a king and queen, because they are around, they're, you know, being if she's a direct descendant of them or, or, you know, like a cousin or something like that, and she's still seen as a prince, they would look for her. She, mm -hmm. you wouldn't let a princess walk around without any type of protection and she's out there solo. So as a princess, she's educated and she has magic where she can make shields. She throws energy balls. Um, she, she helps them defeat the evil wizards that are around that have established territories and, and, and their regimes, mm -hmm. right? She gave Thundar the sun sword. Yes. When the Sun Sword at one episode ran out of energy, she told him where to go to re-energize the Sun Sword in this one particular pool. So she knows that her story. And, and why did she select the free Thundar and Ukla? That, that, where did that friendship form? Because they never really touch on it. All we know, once again, in the opening of the show with da 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 right? Exactly, is she gave him the weapon. Mm -hmm. Why did she pick him? I, I can understand why she picked him, but I need mm -hmm. to understand from the character's point of view why she picked him. I, as a yeah. viewer, I can understand why she would pick him, right? Because he was standing up to them. And he was one of the few that would stand up to the, the wizard. So I could see him being that, that archetype character. You know, he, he's like a Captain America character. He's a leader, no matter mm -hmm. what. So it, it's got to, I need an origin story for all three characters. Like, I mean, not separately. It could be all intertwined, obviously, right? Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. I this want it to come easily back. be like, yeah, yeah. Has, I'm just literally, it has to be at least a, 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 a seven or eight episode show. Yes. And give it enough time to break it down. And, yes. And, 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 and again, with today's budget and everything like that, yeah, you get one season. So it's a give, me eight, give, me, give me some eight. Give me eight. I'm okay with eight. Could definitely, once you get eight, you're going to dig into someone and someone's going to say, I need more. You're yes. clearly going to be able to get people to, to run the rendezvous and just say, like, you know what? We need to extend this series. Believe me. You, you, you have enough storyline. And again, the great thing about this is that this is in the future. Yeah. There's rarely... And I was trying to think this this afternoon. Mm -hmm. How many futuristic mm -hmm. apocalypse mm -hmm. type of media is there and i was really trying to like i came with um like i said what the planet of the eggs that's why it came to my head right. like the scenario okay. um but it's not that far ahead no um apocalyptic you like you know like i mentioned you know you know uh, robert kirkman shout out to robert kirkman for uh for, i mean walking dead yes it's not futuristic but you have the apocalyptic type right there okay yeah i got you have the All combination right. of both in right. the future yeah. there's not a lot so that means that particular book it's unwritten. Yes. It's unwritten. And you can, you can literally have a, a, a blank slate. Of course, as long as you make sense, you will have a blank slate. Of course. You can do something with that. So this is where I'm just saying that, there, like you said earlier, there are stories to be told. There are stories to be told. You have enough. Um, there's enough stuff that you can dig in and make something out of that. So this, this, is, this, is, what I'm, this is what I look at, that... This is something that could definitely be great. That could be done. Uh, I really hope that someone listens to this and, you know, Please. you know what? Pop this in the right person's ear type of scenario. You know what? I would really love that, that I can say this is what, this is what, um, this particular time, you know, pandemic 20, 2021, yeah. that at least in the next few years, I hear something coming back. Great that if they heard it from us, great. If not, yep. even better. I don't care. Really and truly, I don't care who, who sparked who came with the Kindle? Who came with the Flint? Who came with the, with with something? Spark something? 
I don't care. I want to see some smoke in two years from now. We're like here, like, you didn't make me sound like a barbarian. Please talk. Please. You <laughs> have more. I need to hear. I want to hear that. That's yeah. how my conversation needs to be. That's my rebuttal. My reply needs to be something like that. Speak. Speak. Yeah. You're not talking fast enough. You're not talking fast enough. Oh my gosh. So on that aspect of it, so here it is. I, I want origin stories. Mm-hmm. Dig deeper. I want to see back because I mean Sabian was clearly he lost to Thundar. So obviously he's gonna be he could be the recurring villain trying to get back Thundar all the time. And he does show up in his show. But other ones, like I mean, the one that stands out for me is Gemini. And and mm-hmm. Gemini, you know, he's got two heads. So you, yeah. you always see one, the other one's covered in the back, and then when it you know he's got a switch, the head turns around like 180, and then the mask comes up and shows the other kind of more fearsome looking head, uh, and he gets a different set of so how do you have like a head on each side and you gotta have a mask back and forth? That there. So even the villains are different that can have um, their own kind of little bit of backstory and, and interwove, and inter, you know, in, in, interwoven story if it's done properly. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, being mm-hmm. said, I, so I'm, I'm still 100% sure, uh, you know, budget, animated, I need it to come back. Now, I've, I've done some research on this. Mm. Oh, and, and top of it, if you're bringing back the cartoon, you got to do uh, something like, you know, uh, sideshow collectibles. They do some great great statues there's other companies out there uh todd mcferlin toys uh, you know some company make me a, a nice articulated moving toy um right i, I want the three main fa- characters i want um you know with the the extra gear like highly articulated or i want a nice statue with with all three of them on on one kind of mantle that you can buy separately and then put it together so it forms mm-hmm. one big one, right? So you're like, how you have your picture behind you? It's got Thundar yeah. with his sword and his sun sword there. And you got Ukla. Yeah. They should put him on, a, you know, with his bow and arrow and, and Ariel ready to cast a spell. You can buy them separately. And then when you put the three of them together, that the base forms like one, I don't know, a broken yeah. car or yeah. something like that, right? Yeah. Ah, that, see, my mind's racing. So something like sideshow collectibles, uh, something, you know, as I said, uh, mm-hmm. do it. That, that's where it's got to come in because it's not sure. enough material on something like this. And then... Yeah. Cartoon wise, I need an art style. It doesn't have to be. Now I know everyone's going to look at, art, like for example, um, Invincible. I like the art style in Invincible, and that was mm. good. They had the budget for it. It really yeah. depicted the action. I always say mm. the best fight scenes that I see in cartoons right now is Peter versus the chicken from Family Guy. It's so <laughs> there's a lot of action with that. When you watch the fight scenes with Peter versus you know the chicken from Family Guy. Those are full out fight sequences, and I want to see something like that. It, it's when they made the Matrix, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, when they made the Matrix at the time, you know, fight scenes in a movie were maybe you know 10, 16 steps for a fight scene, and and, and that was considered big. When the Matrix came out, they were like, they were like, oh no, we're gonna go how they do over it in Asia. They do sixty four steps for a fight scene, and you see it. It gives you more action. You're like, wow. Right, yeah. so Thundar is a barbarian with a sun sword from being a gladiator, broke free, and he's fighting. And he fights robots. He fights magicians. So on, I see this come out. I want to. Here's my thing. I'm not sure if you're gonna see this or not. I'm gonna put it up here, depending how my screen is gonna work for me or not. Tilt. There you All go. right, Tilt so, forward. Right? Tilt forward. Tilt okay, forward. here we go. Bam. Here we go. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna put up a proper thing. So this is this is the uh, box set of Spider Man. You know, it's cutting up because oh. of my background. So it's the spectacular Spider Man cartoon that came out a, a couple of years back, right? And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I like the art style from the spectacular, you know, spectacular, spectacular right. Spider-Man. So that series, I like the art style. I like, and the art style, it reminds me of um, the same guy who, uh, and I, for, like, I always butcher his name, who did Samurai Jack, right? Mm. So I would go more with a different art style. Uh, it's, it's more simple, it's cleaner art style for Thunder the Barbarian. Right. The reason I'm mentioning this is because the guy who came up with the look for, you know, uh, spectacular Spider-Man, he's out there as an artist himself, um, obviously, and uh, he's on like Deviant Art. Uh, you know, so if you go on there, you can find him, um, and he goes by the name of Cheeks Hyphen Seven Four. So if you're looking for Cheeks Hyphen Seven Four, he does it. His 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 real name is uh, Sean Galloway. So okay. Sean Galloway is who came up with the art style for the spectacular Spider-Man that they use for that series. I liked it because it was very action oriented. Mm-hmm. You know, if you watch the spectacular Spider-Man cartoon, 
yeah. when Peter was in action as Spider-Man. Oh, oh. It, it reminded me of Peter from Family Guy and the Chicken, right? You know, he really drew Spider-Man to using his powers to the full extent, more than past Spider-Man cartoons, not knocking on them, but you you saw Spider-Man as Spider-Man, like the flips, the jumps, the moves, the slides. That I'm like, oh, okay, okay, this this is how I envision Spider-Man to be. So his art style makes it really nice to see that break out. So I want to see a fast-paced fighting style. I mean, it goes with the times, right? You don't want to see a slow swing. You want to see the the swords, pop, 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 shit. You know, you want to hear that kind of rhythm to it. So Sean Galloway it, on his on his Deviant Art page drew uh, the classic Thunder the Barbarian, right? In his style, almost, you know, very reminiscent of, you know, Spectacular Spider-Man. Um, you know, when I say classic bar the Barbarian, so he drew, like, you know, all three of the main characters in their, their traditional looks. But right. then he went, and this is like years prior, and I'll find it, I'm going to throw it up maybe in this video. He uh, did a picture of what Thunder could look like, and he went totally different. And mm. his Thunder had on like a, 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 a poncho kind of a cloak kind of thing. He had like a, a little bit of a tattoo. He still had it. He had the sun sword, but you know, so he had on his boots is, you know, I'll, and when you see the picture, you'll see what I'm talking about. And he had on like a glove. So it'd start at his wrist and go all the way up to his bicep. And that's where he would keep the sun sword on. Yeah. And I liked his look of it because it gave more of a gladiator feel to Thundar. Um, you know, and it made more sense of how it would be more functional, what he was. So, so Sean Galloway, and I'm going to tag him on this for sure. He might give an opinion and he might not. It'd be great if he does. Um, I would love to see his art style in a more uh, adult theme. So uh, uh, like late teen to early adult storyline for Thundar the Barbarian. And, you know, for the voice actors, if, you know, for who's around, if, we, if the voice actors are still around and they're still active, then um, bring them back. I, I get it was years ago. If not, then uh, the voice actor who I'd like to play, uh, Thunder, because I like how he did it, is there was a, a cartoon that came up by Marvel. So it was um, Wolverine versus, no, sorry, Hulk versus. Okay. So there, was, there was two ones. They were short. They were like maybe 20 yeah. minutes each one. So it was Hulk versus Wolverine. And Hulk versus Thor. Thor, yep. Yeah, exactly. So in Hulk versus Wolverine, the guy who plays the Hulk. Okay. Right, he plays Bruce Banner. He plays and he plays the Hulk. He's a very boisterous volume guy. That is who I would like to see play Thunder the Barbarian. I want to tag him in this, uh, you know. Um, but that 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 that's there for me. Ariel, you need someone of a similar voice to play Ariel, who is articulate. Um, you know, but a calm, articulate presence, you know, mm -hmm. but she's got that, that quiet strength behind her. Like she's, it's got to be all about confidence. She's not conceited. She's confident. She's confident when she walks into a situation that she doesn't need Thundar or Ukla to protect her. She's going to walk in there and say, don't worry about it. They're going to look at us like, well, you know, we're going to protect you because in Thundar's way, he, he, he sees her as a woman and he's got to protect her. And she's like, oh, no, I don't need you. I'm good. <laughs> spell, spell, shield, <laughs> energy ball, um, levitate you over here. Okay, I'm going to make an energy exactly. bridge. Bring the horses. Let's yeah. ride all of us over the energy bridge. Okay. It was like, oh, I didn't know we can get to the other side like that. She's like, yeah. <laughs> you know. Don't worry about it. I got yeah. you. Thundar is more impulsive. She's more, you know, there's times where she's like, come with me. And he grabs her and he jumps off a cliff and grabs a rope and gets down there. And she's like, you know, I could have levitated us down here. Uh, but yeah, we ride. <laughs> he's a man of action. <laughs> he is a man of action. <laughs> Doesn't say he thinks all the time. He's just a man of action. Like he sees a situation. He tackles it, right? Sure. He, he's very independent. But it, it, Ariel's like, well, I can levitate us. Or how are we going to get across? Let me see. Okay, I made a bridge. Let's get the horses. Let's go. Uh, okay. <laughs> you see, so that's good because you're you're going from that that standpoint. Like voice actors and stuff like that. Uh, I will say for me, I will say honestly, mm -hmm. you brought a good point. You brought a good reference coming back from the Hulk and bringing it forward that way. Because I was trying to think of an actor. I was thinking as a physical actor or even a voice actor, and I'm going to think who would have that poise to do that. And honestly, it did take me for a spin trying to find somebody. And then I'm like, okay, let me just look. Let me just go look. 
who's who's you know that has that hulky athletic big built type of you know presence so i was like going through going through and then i came across and i'm like thinking i can't believe i didn't think of this person right off the bat so dave uh, uh batista oh dave batista batista sorry yes forgive me so it, it just when you when you think of him like he can play a big range of of characters but we you can you can everybody can obviously see where i'm pulling i'm drawing the, the narrative from right. you know we bring from drax so yes. You can see, I can, I'm eating the chips so slowly that you can't see me. You don't see me. I'm moving ever so slow. That's like, I see that and I'm like thinking, you'll just have to change it up slightly, but he could have that same type of mind, presence of mind. Yeah. I can see him doing Thunder. Well, and yeah, I'm like, because thinking, people don't realize he's done other movies, right? So he's, he, he's done Drax, the Destroyer in Guardians of the Galaxy. He what? played another character um, in one of the James Bonds with um, um, Daniel Craig. He plays a villain, you know, or, or it's a respecter, or, you know, and he's got yeah. roles in there. So he, he's all over the place. Uh, so Dave Batista from the WWE, former WWE uh, mm -hmm. wrestler. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. He's got a sense of humor. Dave, Dave would pull that off. Okay. I'm with you, man. See, yeah. who I was talking about? His name is uh, Fred uh, Tetascori. So T A T A S C I O R E. So that's the person I'm referring to who played the Hulk in Hulk versus okay. Wolverine. Got it. Got it. Got right. It. If you watch that animated short and he, and he does it, and if you watch the behind the scenes of how he plays it, oh, mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, man. This guy's Thunder. <laughs> right. So, but I like Dave Batista. I like, I like that too. So those are two good shots right there. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So who did you have for Ariel? Who were you thinking for Ariel? Oh man! I, I, so I didn't. I didn't get that far. You with didn't get Ariel. that far. You know, it's okay. Because listen, I, I, in my head was thinking like that. I was thinking, um, someone who you said the part properly just now. You see someone who's very articulate, and you know, and that's what I was saying even earlier. And right. you, you look at her, 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 her complexion, and the way she is. I can just saying that she's not Caucasian, or she's 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 either mixed. She's you know. Yeah. Indian, black, or anything in that regard. So that's where my mind yes. is thinking. Said, okay, you know what? We're, we're gonna, I agree with, we're, you. I agree with that. I see that. Diversity is there. The diversity is there. Yes. So I was thinking, okay, who that we can do? And then now that we're talking definitely more of voice actors, actress, actors in that sense, or actresses, I was thinking grab, uh, Gabrielle Union. Oh, wow. Because yeah. Gabrielle Union, she has a very distinct, clear voice in the sense that when you hear her talk, you can hear everything she's saying. And she's, yes. She's like, and even even at a sidebar, um, two or three weeks ago, uh, what was it Bad Boy Two? Mm -hmm. Bad Boy Two, or Bad Boy Three, the one where she she came and she's Marcus's brother. Yeah, and she, number two, and just number two, right? So she was there, and you can just you know, she's being the character of just being nice and whimsy and fun, whatever the case may be. But when she had to be, this the FBI agent, right? She was on point, and I'm yes. like, yeah, yes. And that's what we need for Ariel. Ariel just to have to have that, that type of, you know, the confidence. And when she speaks, like, that, I know what these things are. Thunder, trust me. This is an elevator. This is a car. This is what we need to do. I got you. We know. Because Thunder, the great thing about it, like you said, he does see her as someone he needs to protect. But there's many times he understands, like, uh, she's, she's also my equal in that sense. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. So he, he respects the boundaries in a sense, not the boundaries, but he respects the understanding that there's the three of us, but everybody has their strength on this yeah. team. Yeah. So uh, I would definitely say with Gabrielle Union, that would be my, my pick for, uh, for uh, Princess Ariel. Okay. And, and Ukla, um, again, he's just... Well, he doesn't speak, he, right? He, so he, he, back, he doesn't so speak. If you're gonna you say... need that kid. You need that. He has to, be, has to have that kid type of mentality. Because yeah, but not too much because he's not really. Yeah, I, I don't want it to be overboard. But you see, so you, I like your, what you're saying about Ariel and and Gabrielle Union. I'm going to throw that and I'm going to counter that with with Cree Summer. Ooh, dirty in a nice way. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, this guy just went and just said, "I'm going in the basket. I'm coming up with the queen." She's she's been the voice. <laughs> actor queen all ages and i would like to see you know i usually she does some younger characters 
This one, I think it would give her uh, a more serious thespian. But yeah, so that's going to be my Ariel will be Cree Summer. That, that's who I'm going to go with. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, that, that's, 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 a, that's a lock. <laughs> I, 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 I concede. I just step to the side. I'm just going to, I'll have a latte. I'll just chill right here. I ain't going to say nothing. I'm good. Uh, we, we could be totally <laughs> off base. So if you guys out there pick a, a picture, another better voice actor for Thunder the Barbarian or, or uh, Princess Ariel, let us know on our Facebook page or Instagram page. Put it in the comments below. We'll, we'll discuss it. We might even put up a little vote. I found this little app that might be fun that we might put up a vote and say, okay, who would you pick? In? Yeah. And, we'll, and we can talk about it later on. So keep your eyes out. So now mm -hmm. we're going with uh, Ukla. So and now I said, for me, I didn't put too much attention to Ukla, not to take mm -hmm. anything away from him. It's just Completely. because he never speaks. Right. So, you know, we, we, we need someone to kind of pull the Vin Diesel up. I am group. And, 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 and perfect. Exactly. You just need someone who just to do that. So it's like, it's not saying any character can do, no. but I mean, it, it's that range. We can kind of leave it a little bit open. And anybody yeah. who has the abilities to, who's done voice acting. So that's where I would say for that one, you would definitely say we need someone who's a voice actor because they're, they know they're going to have to portray that, that sound. Yes. Clearly through, through their voice. Uh, yeah. not, not speaking, but through their sound, they're going to have to be able to portray that for you, you to know, understand. From a happy sound to sad to whatever. And then exactly. that works with the animators yeah. trying to portray that emotion visually mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for it to be mm -hmm, seen. Right. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. somewhat, yeah. So it's not to take away from the character. It's just, you know, um, I, I'm not going to say like who 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 be good at sound. So you know, they might get it could be double duty. That same actor I was calling out, Fred. Yeah, he did yeah. the Hulk and he did all the growls and all that. So just like um, uh, how you know the the for Family Guy, you know, you have a voice actor that does you know Peter and oh, he yeah. does Brian and he does uh, Stewie right. at the same time. So right. sometimes he's having conversations with himself. Not that he's crazy, but right. right? So that that's so that's why I'm thinking you know Fred can do double duty for both. Correct. Right, that that's my opinion. So, yeah, yeah, that that's 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 what I got, man. Any any uh, and but that's the art style I was going with because I know there was the 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 uh, the other animated series, like the the Batman, right, where Batman was able to call his car with his yes. smartphone. Yes, that that one would be very. I could see that one. I could mm -hmm. definitely see that one working well because it's not that far off the body structure and everything like that. Right. Uh, could definitely work with um, on an updated one. That can work as well. The Batman, that animated style could definitely work. Yeah, that's not a bad one either. Right. So it's, it's, to me, it's a toss up, but you know, it's just, I know that uh, Sean Galloway's got the, he's, he's definitely a Thundar fan because he just kind of did the art for it. And, and I'm not biased because, you know, he also did some great Gatcha Man art. You know, I, not that oh. I'm biased to no, get no, you at all I, anyone that, that you know knows me knows that um I, no I, yeah, you? yeah me catch man what, what are you talking about not, not i don't have all you know catch man one and catch man two and catch man fighter on on dvd box sets no i don't i don't have those and i don't have a bust of zoltar and no i i, I don't have books and artwork i don't have a three by five foot poster of, of you mark know, uh, Mark, you know, as, you know, Gatcha Man, you know, uh, or Ryu as they call it, not Ryu, but uh, yeah, so um, don't, no, I have, I, I, don't, I don't have the figures of, of not at all. Not no, I, I don't have, I don't have, no, no, I, no. Stay no. tuned, stay tuned, people, we'll probably be doing this sometime soon. <laughs> Just saying. Yes, we will. Well, it's true. It's, it's, it's damn true. true. I won't be surprised when I get that email. Hey, we're going to do Gatcha Man. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> So I should make a pool with somebody. What date are we going to do this on? <sighs> we'll go with that. Anyways, back to the game. Let's go. Yeah, so that's about that, man. Um, I don't know. Like, listen, it was, this, was, this, was a, this was a good run. So I was just saying my final thoughts on that. Saying, not final thoughts, but I'll just, I'll just yeah, wrap yeah, yeah. up my end of it. It's saying, Thunder the Barbarian is, um, it definitely was um, a great cartoon back in early 80s. And it, Definitely captured a. It captured my heart, captured Barry's heart, and I'm dead sure that once people start to recognize who this is, and if they have the chance to go back and look, um, this may be one of those ones that it's going to spark a little memory. Uh, a lot of uh, individuals who just you know do a little quick little research and just go back online and you find it, and you'd be like, saying, "Oh, that one." And when you watch a couple of episodes, you'd be like thinking, "Yeah, this this was a good this was a good show." I'm sad. I'm sad that it only had a two season run, um, but. 
it was it was not said before its time, but a lot a lot of people should have gravitated to that. And I think giving this a little breath of life, a little research, th this could definitely uh, make a difference. And um, people people will uh, definitely gravitate to it. I'm definitely sure of that. If they're let's put it this way, if they're even if the idea of even He Man, and I love the He Man. He Man is able to make could come back and make a presence. Sundar should not be that far behind on his heels. I'll just leave it at that. Right on. In the famous words of that great, great, great poet, Ed Lover. Come on, son. <laughs> Let me tell you something, right? When it comes to Thunder the Barbarian, what we need, as I said, we need the statues or we need a full out play line because you guys, you, you missed the ball the first time in the 80s because I would have bought all them figures, right? We, we need action sets. We need, you know, and it's very simple. You make it the same size as the G.I. Joe uh, action set like from, from years ago. You make the figures around that side, the six inch, the standard size they have right now, mm -hmm. right? So you give me a Thunder, you give me Ookla, you give me Princess Ariel, you get a couple of the villains in there, and then you put in a playset. You can put in a, a Gladiator Pit playset. You can put in a playset for one of the, the, the you know, the, the, uh, the, the wizards. The sorcerers, you put that as a playset. There you go. You got two playsets, a couple of characters. Boom! You give me some animation in there, followed up with some uh, adult kind of statues. What I mean, adult statues, like you know, from like sideshow collectibles or something like that, along those lines. And there you go. You got your line. It's created, and you can actually, you know, in, in, go from it. You can put in like a broken car, and 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 you know, you give the horses the thunder. There's there's things that you can do that you all missed in the 80s and people like me from the 80s a little bit upset that he couldn't get anything even up to now as a grown man with a budget so under the barbarian let, let, final thoughts i mean come on the, his first episode was the secret of the black pearl that took place in new york you know what i mean and then he he was in mexico and then he was in cape canaveral there was an episode in cape canaveral with the spatial right there nasa come on ah. You know, Norfolk, uh, Virginia, Mount Rushmore, Washington, D.C., Las Vegas, you know, uh, San Fernando Valley, Denver, Colorado. So he really went around, you know, San Antonio, he, he, Texas. This guy went around San Francisco. He was a futuristic littlest hobo. He was a futuristic littlest hobo. Yes, he was. He was a futuristic littlest hobo with a fabulous sun sword. So he went to Beverly Hills, Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta's a hot spot right now. I mean, you know, everyone's filming Atlanta. So if the uh, the Thunder the Barbarian went to Atlanta in the 80s before it blew up with Tyler Perry and, you know, House of Pain and, and all the shows that he's doing there with his studio and, and what's filming there in Atlanta. Um, you know, Bad Boys 3 filmed in Atlanta. Uh, part of it, you know, uh, Walking Dead, Fear of the Walking Dead filmed in Atlanta. Thunder was a, a trailblazer. <laughs> Joker. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Not to say that I'm passionate about this, so my final oh, thought is... <laughs> Never, I never thought about it. Yeah, exactly. Thunder the Barbarian. Check it out. Check out the backdrop. Check the backdrop. Check the backdrop. Right on. Right on. You know. <laughs> um, this is one that needs to come back. I want to see it come back. I don't want to see it come back as a little kitty cartoon where it's all jokes. Oh my gosh, no. No. no, no don't no, no, don't no, no, no. disrespect the material. Don't make me leave my house during this time to find out who authorized that. That's not what we're talking about. We are talking about give us a proper Thunder the Barbarian. Let's let's come on now. Come and once again the famous words of that great poet Ed Lover. Come on, son. Oh, son. Come on, son. Let's just get real. So Thunder the Barbarian, streaming service, cartoon, either the art style of the Batman cartoon or the spectacular Spider-Man that was inspired by Sean Galloway. Um, and I'm going to post all this stuff on our Facebook page and, and Instagram. We're going to put up voice actors. Tell us your pick. Tell us you agree. Tell us you don't agree. Let's keep it friendly. Let's have some fun. It's just mm -hmm. we're passionate about it. We're going to wrap this episode up. Mm. <sighs> okay, I'm good. I think I got out of my system. Sorry, Rod. My bad. Oh, oh. My bad. All the lights. <laughs> demon dogs. <clears throat> you know, I mean, I mean, demon dogs. I mean, that, that, that there sounds like a spicy hot dog to me. And I like my hot dog. So if you're having a demon dog, that's got to have a lot of spice and it's going to come back to haunt you later. Oh, that, you that is a demon know. dog. See, I, uh, that, see how I marketing rules? Yeah. You, you make a demon dog? Hey, remember Barry 3D. Yeah. You heard it here first. I'm out. On that I'm note. Out <laughs> yeah, you're on your own, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Barry3D, stands for Deep Dark Delicious. Hey, 
You can find all my links at barry3d.com. If you're in a position to help the channel grow, please find our coffee page at coffee backslash the Iconist podcast, you know, help us uh, help the channel grow by getting new equipment and, and so forth. So we can keep doing this passion project for everybody. And, and we're happy. Uh, I got to say on a side note, um, you know, and, and I, by the time they see this is probably gonna be a while, but I, I got I heard back from one of my friends in, you know, elementary school, high school, watched the episode, uh, was watching our episodes and he liked it and, mm-hmm. and, and brought back memories. So it's, it's nice to kind of reconnect with nice. people that, you know, I might've have, have lost touch with, unfortunately, but it was so, I was so happy. You don't know how, much it meant he wrote a nice message on our youtube page and it was like wow it just brought back memories to me being in as an elementary school high school so uh big shout out to michael thank you you know Um, you know you see him in the comments below but yes yes ah, ah, awesome um and uh that that, that's it so you'll see all the links and all that at the end of this video and once again jaybird digital studio for everything you've done for us thank you over to my co-host dj rod c yeah, so well, you know, I appreciate you guys coming out. You know, you can definitely follow me on uh, Instagram at Mr. Rod C M R R O D C. Uh, you can definitely find me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash DJ Rod C. Um, definitely got a you know Facebook page. You can find me there on DJ Rod C as well. Um, definitely follow us on Akana's um, YouTube page. Definitely make sure you hit that subscribe, hit that like, um, notification, the, notification. But definitely just take that ULR and just send it to a friend. Share it. There's no, sh- you know, and just share it to somebody and just let them know. If you enjoyed yourself, please make sure that if you liked it, please you send it off. I'm sure there's a couple of people that you know that would enjoy this as well. So we just ask and we just, you know, appreciate you just having your time and just taking a listen to us. Uh, but definitely let your friends know. You know we got something going on. And, you know, the more the merrier. And as Barry said, you know, we appreciate any type of support that you can give. Um, Words of, you know, encouragement is great as well. Hey, yes, you know, absolutely. you're just letting us know that you guys enjoy it. That's beautiful as well. All right. Awesome. Perfect. And on that, keep your mind mm-hmm. that this whole world that we talk about was created with a pencil, a piece of paper and imagination. Keep on dreaming. Let's keep on talking. Iconist podcast. We're out. Mm. I'm out, people. <laughs> I got no screens. Nice. <laughs> I'm out of space, people. I'm going. Peter. <laughs> oh my god. Man, that was a good one. <laughs>